and welcome to this edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. Today's episode, we're going to step back in time and re-examine the case of Maitrice Richardson. She's a 24-year-old California woman whose plight started September in 2009 at Joffrey's restaurant and ended tragically August of 2010 in a remote place in Malibu called Dark Canyon. Now, Dark Canyon is a place where it is a known marijuana field and it is a known place for pornography where shoots are made because it's so remote. And we're going to examine, you know, some strange circumstances surrounding that. And the reason why we're going to examine that is because certain things just do not add up. And it seems very much like a cover-up is in effect. Now, on the night of this mishap in the restaurant, where obviously she was confused, she was having a mental episode, there's no doubt about that. Several witnesses can bear witness to that. Her mother was called around 10, before Maitrice Richards was even booked her mother offered to come down and pick her up. Now, her mother was told that she will be released the next, in the morning time, and kind of assured that she would be in a cell by herself, separated, she would be safe. I find it very odd that they did not offer to just release her that particular night to the arms of her loved one. And it seems to me that there were circumstances at play whereas they did not want to have Maitrice out of their custody. It seems to me that this was deliberate. Now, I'm going to use some logic, common sense, reasoning, and some intuitive abilities to dissect some things here. Mel Gibson was at the same station and they offered to drive Mel Gibson 11 miles to pick up his car. Now, when they released my trees at that particular night after 12 a.m., yeah, 12 a.m. in the morning, midnight pretty much, I'm wondering why didn't they offer to take her back to where her car was impounded? and at least get her cell phone and wallet so she can make a call. First off, why did they even put her cell phone and wallet in the trunk or leave it in the car to be impounded? Someone should have thought about that. It almost seems like they were setting the stage so she can have no one to contact when she would be released. Now, there's some things which I want to focus on right here. They're making a claim that when Maitrice was released, some hours later, she wound up in a reporter's, a former reporter, news anchor, Bill Smith's backyard. Now, Bill Smith and his wife claimed that uh, their fence is locked and they have no idea as to how she got in there. Now, let me tell you where I'm going to take this. I think we need to be very careful because we need to look at his ties to the sheriff's department. Does he know them? 
Is he familiar with them? Did he really even see my trees? Was that her? Could it have been someone else? Could the young lady there have been a plant? And you're going to see where I'm going to take this. It just seems to me that all cases have got to be explored and examined, even the ones that are uncomfortable. Now, this is a depiction. It was very disturbing. It had images of black women, and it does seem to have told a story of what happened to Maitrese. What this seems to tell to me, this is a woman who's smoking a blunt. What I'm getting from this is that this is actually a depiction. The Sheriff's Department, for some strange reason, dismissed this evidence and made claims that it had nothing to do with the Mitrice's my, my case. I beg to differ. I believe it does. I believe that whoever picked her up that night in my Teresa's distressed state, confused, afraid, anxiety is very high. They gave her something to smoke. And what they gave her to smoke was laced with something more harder, more stronger. And what this simply did was that it rendered my trees in a state where she could not basically say no or protest or stop what was happening to her. These are images that were painted that were since covered up with a depiction of black women. And one of the depictions it shows a female in a, a wheelchair. It almost looks like to me that someone was hitching a ride and they picked her up. And people, this right here is an occult symbol. And this is where I want to take this because this is what I believe and what I'm feeling that my Teresa's death was some type of sacrifice, that it was some type of an occult sacrifice. This is the reason why we have the sheriff's department who are covering this up because they are in on it. Some members are. I would not say all of them, but some members are. When people are involved into the occult, things like this, it has a reach through government, through different agencies, through different branches. It can involve actors. It can involve law enforcement, firefighters, politicians. It seems to me that that particular night, that particular night, they needed someone to sacrifice. And what they did, they allowed a mentally unstable woman to walk out of there knowing that she would be easy prey. It's almost like they allowed her to be some type of hunted animal, so to speak, even though she wasn't that. I'm, this is how they might have looked at her. Someone who we can hunt down. She's easy prey. Where we can do a little religious rituals on her. And yes, members of law enforcement are involved in these satanic rituals. Just like politicians are just like actors are, because it seems to me that they're going too heavy to cover it up. We're going to release her 12 o'clock midnight. We're not even going to call her mother. We're not going to call any loved ones. They deliberately know what they were doing. We're not going to take her back to get her car keys, her cell phone, her wallet, nothing. We're just going to release her in the remote region that she has no 
recollection or basically she just does not know the area. She's not familiar with the surroundings. So could this be the reason why law enforcement is covering things up? They're very, being very lackadaisical about things. They're not looking into things. When the body was there against the coroner's suggestions, they moved the body anyway and destroyed evidence. They had her clothes someplace else where it should have been analyzed. And going back to those pictures, did they take any pictures? Or rather, did they take any fingerprints of the mural? Fingerprints around there? Did they take any fingerprints of the paint brushes they found there? The paint cans in which they found there? And they claim that some guy or the artist who did it came forward. That's not saying anything. You can pay someone to say anything you want them to say. Do we have any proof that he even did come forward to say that this has nothing to do with the case? Are we just going to take him at his word? And, you know, is there any type of video clip of him coming forward talking to them? They should have that. So that right there, I'm not really buying. Now, going back to Bill Smith, who claims that she's seen my tree, he's seen my trees in his backyard. Could he possibly be connected to this organization also? They're claiming that my trees was sitting, I guess, on some steps there. And his wife asked, or he asked, are you OK? And she goes, I'm just resting. It just sounds like to me that people are trying to get alibis in play or in order. Because one of the things that the police will do is that they will cover their tracks. They will try to cover the dots pretty much and try to throw people off. So they, they, there was a claim that my trees was seen in Las Vegas and the mother knew that was a lie. By the way, I've never met the mother. I've never spoken to her, but I can tell that she's very intuitive. And when the mother stated that over the phone uh, about finding my tree, she didn't want to find her with her head cut off. That was a premonition. That was a premonition to come. And it just shows that she is very intuitive. And I think that she would kind of understand if she happens to see my video as to where I'm going with this. That these people were in on this sacrifice of this young girl. Because it's just too much here for them not to be. You could have just basically, the whole evaluation thing, we're going to skip over that. You know, we know that she's rambling on incoherently talking about Mars. One of the deputies stated that she's a ding, dingbat, lunatic, kind of crazy out of there. But she was harmless. So that was enough right there to get her to be observed to the right person, to get her into a 5150, to the proper people. But they chose not to do that. And they chose not to do that because they did not want to lose my trees out of their custody. You can clearly see that all the steps in which they were taken, not informing the mother that she's going to be released, not informing the mother when she was released, not taking her to the proper mental facility where someone can evaluate her, keeping cell phones away from her, not notifying loved ones. This was to keep her in their custody. Now, why would they want to keep her in their custody? They wanted to keep my trees in their custody so they can complete their sacrifice of her. This is pretty much what this was about. Because we had, they had, too many opportunities to do the right thing. Way too many. But instead, 
they chose to to lie, to cover up, to be deceptive, making statements that no, we have no video of my trees, when in fact they did have a video of my trees. And basically, in that particular area where she was found, it's so remote, it's so hidden. How would she have gotten there by herself? Wouldn't the deputies or someone who know the area know about that remote location? And they stated that there's a suspect named Bill who was a lifeguard. Now, if Bill is a lifeguard, isn't that connection to the LAFD fire department? Would not the fire department have some connections to the sheriff's department? So it just seems like to me that what happened here is that some of the deputies are involved or have connections to this organization, a secret organization, an evil organization, a satanic organization who did this sacrifice. And what they did was that as she was leaving on this desolate road from the sheriff's station, they notified who they needed to notify as to where she was going. She was probably being watched, probably being followed. And they took her to a place where she was held for a while. I do not believe that they uh, murdered her that particular night. I'm getting a feeling that she was held there for a while. And with these sacrifices, what they do, you know, the murals that were very explicit, showing women's bodies, showing women nude. What they tend to do, and a lot of times in sacrifice, is that sexual abuse is involved. How many people were involved? Probably more than one. The sheriffs know who it is. This is the reason why they're trying to cover their tracks. And let me just tell you another thing. This so-called Bill guy who they have on the radar, if Bill was acting alone, they would have solved the case. They would have turned him in. Why sit up there and make the whole department suspect for the actions of what one person has done? They would have found the evidence and they would have um, directed them towards the suspect. So by them not directing this towards one suspect, it tells me that there are multiple suspects involved in this. Which tells me that, yes, there are people in that department who knows what happened, who are connected to this. And by the way, there's a jailer who made a statement that he or she offered my trees to stay the night there. Do we know that? Is there any type of um, recording of that? It just seems like to me that you're putting that out there to make yourself look good, to make yourself look like a, a good person. We don't really know that. The only person who would know that is my trees. So that particular story right there that we offered her to stay there, I don't know if I even buy that. You know, um, I just think that it's a hot air saver trying to save yourself to make yourself look good. And by the way, going back to those um, paintings, my trees, my trash means uterus. And there was a painting of a vagina on that wall there. So, those paintings do have something to do with this particular case. And it's very strange how the sheriff just dismissed it totally. That's a cover-up right there. So many things that they chose not to do, chose to turn away from, chose not to investigate, chose to just do a 360 turn, tells me that they are not interested in 
letting you know what the truth is. And if they're not interested in letting you know what the truth is, that means that they have something to hide. So, these secret organizations, you got to look at this. News people are even involved in them. And this Bill Smith, I heard the testimony was very shaky. We don't even know if that woman who was in his backyard was a plant. With these secret organizations or societies, I'm sure that they probably do have black women in them. They may. Could that have been a plant in his backyard? Could he even be telling the truth? We don't even know that. But it's very suspect. That could be the throw, the timing off. She supposedly was found in his backyard five or six hours later, is what he's saying right there. So this painting right here depicts, I believe, what happened to her. Very sinister. And that particular area, Dark Canyon, has had a few deaths. A few unexplained and unsolved deaths that has happened there. So, this story here, not to beat anyone up, but I would tell any black person, know the history of law enforcement. Know the history as to why they were started in America as slave catchers. Never trust any child with them. Never feel safe with them. Will this case be solved? You know, people who are in these organizations or societies, it's almost like it has a religious stranglehold on them. They're going to be very obedient and they're going to be pretty much just joint to the hip, have such a commitment towards their sect, towards their organization. It's going to be very difficult to get the truth out of them as to what happened. Someone will have to leave pretty much and like convert or something and then spill the beans. Other than that, Will we really find out exactly what happened? Who knows? But I'm telling this story right here. Not to torture anyone. Certainly not to torture the family. You know, just to let who did this know that there are certain people who are on to you that maybe we're getting closer to you. My Teresa's family are never going to be able to rest peacefully. And these people who did this, I'm doing this so this could bring another layer, another um, route to go down. So you would always have to be looking over your shoulder and you will not get any rest, neither. Because there are some of us who kind of have a good, a good idea as to what truly happened. My trees, rest in peace. And family, you will definitely see her again. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty, and I will see you all beyond and through.